Fovea Centralis by Christopher Dudney Read by Ken Hunt The Drawing Out of Color In the silent radar forest, iridescent scarabs bear coiled trilobites in slow procession up the meridian of symmetry. A canopy of precision optical instruments identically dissolves in the rain of sensorium. The voice of cicada in this forest is the long-sustained note of an indeterminate philosophy in a court where the evidence neither confirms nor denies its testimony. We are informed. Motion within time's arena is repealed here with the proceeds of all our invisible centers. Each act in the scene of its occurrence etches an observation gallery into the rich and mute loam of the forest floor. The forest translates itself into each perception generated by the meeting of heaven and earth. At twilight, the bat's synaptic flight darkly traces the foliage processional while the leaves cast in water become as violins or cryptogram. Witness the drawing out of color. I am the Lord, and these are my flies. For John Kogler A thin loop of metal or twine, almost invisible, coiled, then struck in one high chord by no hand. Index of refraction, incandescent solar prominence, frozen, telescopically from great distance, viewed again and again. Store windows reflect those who pass and the pale ones who walk beside them. Symmetry's ghosts soundlessly colliding with their own images. The neck becomes an agent for the discorporate and imperceptible graduation of madness, increasing from the head to the neck, slit with great shark gills, pulse of insane cephalopods traveling through time. The owl's eyes are slowly brought into focus, while the hands hanging limply on slinky arms throttle the soul. John, John, in my dreams you now smile blandly, carefully purged of that neural threat by my memories, Russian historians. The shiny Elliot leather-soled shoes slipping over the ice, summer clothes in the stellar clarity of a subthermal January afternoon, facing you in my head, the stars or dawn you saw last in the Meccano warehouse, photographing your obsession and its natural generation from a disjointed season. You ate the insect under instructions from a meteoroid circling outside of Mercury where the hot stings of the wasps were forged and tattooed into your mirror child at Gibbon's Peak. Like the dragon eating his own tail, 
you had simply arrived at the neck, and the flies, behavioral and copulating in synthetic harmonies, told you the nature of new. The Fish Machine In the fish machine, everything functions soundlessly, and no moving parts touch each other. Long shafts, slightly flexible, alternately extend and diminish in the dull, underwater light. The fish formations are RCAF, and downstream, helicopter fish whirl and pivot in the imperial forest of mud clouds. At the base of each tree, a clam takes excess in the individuality of its siphon and species. The fish machine does not stop here, but pauses only to catch its row and bubbles off to the St. Lawrence and perhaps even the Atlantic, possibly strewn on some Bermuda beach. It is fought over by a bevy of young suburbanite blondes in tans and bikinis. But this does not alter the wordless world of the fish machine. Its saucer eyes are silver screens for the eidetic magnets placed there by our thoughtful projectionist. The projectionist, who worded the fish machine in the net of its function. The net, moving parts actual and envisaged, or simply a blind river with cave eels and lamprey fences, crackling blue and garnet sparks under the cold January moon, where long deficit fishermen cast their nets gambling for some exotic hybrid whose gametes had perhaps united with the northeastern power grid. Architectural meiosis formulating degrees of reasoning beyond the logic of hand and ear. The brain wanted us here, but why? As I was saying, this fish machine could not see itself in a mirror, as it was its own mirror image. It exists within its mirror image, superimposed on each notation of its existence in the long and shifting corridors of seaweed. When a person is in another room, whether that room be across the hall, in the next town, or around the world, you do not know what that person is doing. You may know that person well enough to predict or even invent a series of formulated ghost reactions, but the act is outside. It is this precise lack of omniscience taught in the face of immaculate knowledge that reduces all desire and the manifold directions of philosophy into one pure and simple religion. Poem What is the exact difference between the inside of an observatory dome and the inside of a planetarium? The central mechanisms, optically complex, either receive or project stars. In either case, the outside is either inside or outside alternately created or revealed. The thin dome's walls conceal viaducts of antimatter, which fluctuate like vacuum tubes in the alternation between outside and in, is love. If you're turned the stars, the observatory and its telescopes inside out, a tiny wriggling and glowing mass of galaxies would squirm in a sphere within another thin metal sphere with a slot in it. From the galaxies 
and through this slot would be seen the lens, convex, yet surrounding the observatory in a glass sphere. On the surface of this sphere of glass would be dusted a film of tiny men and a filigree microscopic of metal crystals. These tiny reverse telescopes would resemble intricate iron filings bristling around an electromagnetically charged translucent glass sphere. The reverse telescope is as tiny as the stars are distant. October. The stratosphere lowers and beckons an aquiline and turquoise stellar. The sun passes through. This summer, when the sun deflects in a billion directions, at brilliant, subdued, and golden once. In October, the microscopic spheres of water floated south, regattas of tiny balloons seeking warmth and rivers to rise from. Thou the glint from jets and the passengers thereof winking, uncomfortable, almost blushing winter sun through bus windows and orthopedic glare off fenders and slush. October, you are the beach I strolled on at Ward's Island, sinking glass tunnels in the waves, pebbles magnified and then into sand fog. The waves? I do not consider the waves empty in your senses. The wind justifiably animates that from without, which cannot from within. The leaves, unusually heavy, fall with vegetable thuds. I cannot tell a lie without help from one or more of my senses. The leaves lie, the leaves lie. August and all her subsets, some as far back as June, as forward as October, burns deeply within a Huron palisade. An autumn fair arrives with leaves and weathered apple wood, silver gray. Halloween and bats going hungry. The December moth and rain after snow. The night is as dark as this pen, spitting, spitting out its point. It pulls no scratches, this Nerve blackboard is a finger telling the brain back to emit or tremulate and is so designed as to become invisible under scrutiny, will not react to will or consciousness light. Would rather sell peaches. This night, holding itself concave and cylindrical, as long as any code with highlights blue and metal, reveals certain tenacity and cleverness in its construction. The battle is with ramifications rather than roots, with leaves rather than rock. Into the Maelstrom there is a wheel unseen between the gestures of the musician and the record invisibly playing above each of our heads. Black halos, where refraction gratings reduce summer harmonies of Fragonard trees and underwater gardens into pale pastel rainbows etched in occluded ebony. There is a poem unseen in the tiny, immaculate landscapes of ash in which life is tediously reconstructed without fear of being consumed, for it has already burned. We abstract in the sun. Now it is all around us, and tracking at two grams the stylus, the hand knows only 
the hollow twang of the dot on the radar screen. As the silent sweep of the beam searches all the music in the spiral, in a single column of light, in the single stem of a crinoid, as the stylus approaches us here, at the center of the vortex, in the eye of the tornado. Your supper is intending. Your supper is intending in a vision of anonymity that frightens even the anonymous. They probably desire what they do as having a good time. You say, we are a cold, clammy bunch. Our dreams reach out to us even in the day. No longer memories. He laughed out loud at a memory incurred. She has me in my army coma. They hung Presley in the army, you know. Aside, I'm coming. I'm highly recommended. A crinoid head is really body and arms. Thunder is heard only near populated areas. Tone of Interruption Splitting personalities, one's kingdom comes as two halves make one whole. Splice of life. Forget the before you tried to forget. A listening of device. Top clearance and decision-bearing rote masters, their loose wits slap-tapping, the drummed temple home to our unholy semblances. To view only inert slot into solid with knife. Sensors, automatic dreams, and dissection tweezers, voice prints, hallowed, re-responsible, day-locked. Clipped in the skin of control migration. Revoked eye shards and the nerve gallery within a hidden obstacle course. Sun through water on jewels. Her lassitude and cunning lip service. Or he wrote that each line followed before its predecessor as griffin to evolution fell. The body, within its own incalculable hierarchy of knowledge, in all its glory, could not but listen to us here, within the shell, beside the cold gray beach. Poem An escarpment caves in and out. The chatter of twigs ceaselessly continues to explain the cues given by the leaves. I cannot tell you how indescribably complex the machinery was I glimpsed in passing. Your heart, like giant vaults, requires nitroglycerin to accelerate the economy. In retrospect, we glistened with dew on the steps of the police station at dawn, while Lake Superior rose like a cloud. August. August occupies fifty million miles, a function of the radius extended to find me here in October, a full one hundred twenty-five million miles from August, with its leaves still green, entirely on some trees. January is a gleaming highlight on the other side of a gold-platinum alloy ring, occupying some Position unrecognizable on the space-time grid. Plottable, determinate, flexible under certain relativities. As the velvet meniscus enfolds August, a tiny stage winks deep in the theater night. August's survivors are Akita Assimilis, Field cricket, still chirping, a wasp indeterminate, Danaus plexibus, monarch butterfly, Pieris rape, K. 
cabbage butterfly and a coleus philodice sulfur here on the 22nd of October. That night at Lake Huron Emerald the leaves curled and flattened like cat ears in terror as the star's strange applause wended its foxfire passage over the beach. Meteors inscribed long, thin needles of white across a carbon-blue midnight sky, and in the eye of each of these needles a star winked through the heat. Thin silver bracelets of constellations posed against the endless and savage recession of space. In the warm, nervous system of the lake, distant shoals of fish rose, glittering on the surface. Immersed and inside the areola of summer darkness, we fused in the natural grace of our moving, our knowledge terrible and flickering in retinal heat lightning on the horizon and over our phosphine faces fleeting the dance of aurora in our transparent flesh, heat wave, solar wind blowing through the empty flutes of stellar love. The music your hair makes. Permanent Trust, Huron and Erie what you were saving towards, and where the bank was. The implantation of an electrode requires perfect control and stillness. Cause of stillness, to be born perfect with no cause for alarm. I am under, out of, remote control. The sun is unmerciful. There are pillow factories no one knows. The banks are parallel or open, or so remote we fall just outside of their gravitational pull. Outside the ring of the sun, where the comets wait. But there was another bank, something you had been saving towards, each footprint a coin in the mint of your going there. When I spoke to you earlier, there is a night where photographic willows bend into a silent wind pouring from the stars, lace wings into unfolding crevices, reversing, and all its mystery a still rhythm. Cathode eels whispered in her folded treatise, the dark river, imprisoned with air and fern, is traced by night hawks, its spectral rainbow tunnel flickering in the gothic moon arena. Devastation amongst the clavichords, each blade of grass on the bank is pivotal in a radial wind calligraphy. Reflected sand dials in the eyeless luster of the river. Poem I stand, perhaps, in the tiny graces of your features, semblance correct within an anesthesia, everlasting love you spoke of. No one methodology lupine Within contexts, your hand is real, and lips congealed upon contact with air, sliding through translucent columns of glass, the union unspeakable. Touch your heart with fingers trembling. The pain is ever rendered through skinless burns, the bare nerve endings sick with sensation. The physiology stripped down to all the tender passages that led you 
full heaven down to me? Welding down and fiber, optic arc of retinal tunnels. Our whispering gallery shudders with countless passings beneath. A subway collision, streaming electric flame. Your eyes. I defy motion to reflect there. Fish eye. The visage of my own love. High Lunar Noon In January, the lunar noon never ends. The stars admit the glowing contrail of a comet as a minor accord in the clarity and secrecy of its blue night. The evergreens are tranquilized in the cold heat of the moon's zenith. The moon is a woman's face startled with white roses, we would say, caught in the perfect stillness of this radio wave spectrum. A mist of space stations and rockets in perfect stiletto halo around complete the moon. The moon, radiating endless crystal summer, through the escarpment ski paths, invisible and dark, inhuman skiers whistle silently down the moonlit forest trails, silver wraiths of house air escape through chimneys directly into stellar space. Vampires a billion mosquitoes hum at the back of at the back of my brain. They have replaced my blood with wings diaphanous, replaced my blood with the desire for itself. Blood, desire pure and winged, siphons to drink pawns out blood of. They hum intense. Sly. Gotcha, you little bugger, cries the wolf, his face humanoid and a little wrinkled, pink in the red sun, blotted out with blood. That's what you'd say, isn't it? You're a joke in the context of your childhood you'd never get. Opium number one. Reaching caustically for the salt, he mentioned the glory. They bowed their heads in embarrassed, calm, and implicit ignorance. Furthermore, he stood up and arbitrated a small group of sparrows flying haphazardly nearby to fork into a base and treble fugue. Opium number two. Rosicrucians with their unkempt desert hair march through the mundane and terrible weeds. Cathedrals are kept burning at intervals along the exacting trail. The new tenants viciously attacked a regulated phenomenon. This means crystal to you. I mean gravity. Perception is mostly inference. This particular landscape implicates you in a vision of symbolism that symbolizes even the symbolists. The mind is a devious parasite feeding specifically on humans. Opium number three. Aloof, and for once unafraid of the spectacles in the trees, I wait to begin this senseless duet. The writing on discarded newspapers in Niagara Gorge are wet autobahn to paradise. 
I saw you welling up in power buds and the hissing, curling electric glow around the edge of your vacuum, that. I am calm. There is a smell of burnt toast in the air, i.e. you. I knew it would come to this, having a shadow not quite unlike a mirror that holds my genitalia in the nerveless hands of love. Opium number four. Break a man's neck, and he can see in all directions. Break his heart, and he will lick your feet. Is not the foot the most indigenous servant of the divided mind? And such a lick, placed cautiously, produces wetness in crotch, even much horny in grab. Opium number five. Feliz. It made sense any way you looked at it. That's how we knew it was dangerous. Pointing to the spot. The lake grew calm. That night we strung each other with a bent needle in a tapestry so perfect it required only our absence to see it. Antlers appeared and then narrowed. We lost our limit in the water. The concretions rolled in silent formations on the lake bottom to gather in dim stonehenge around us. The Midnight Dew I am thinking of you when you are not here. When I think of you and you are not here, I'm not really thinking of you. My head gets wet with the midnight dew. Remote control was discovered by a Japanese secret society near the end of the Second World War. The secret society was minimally aware of this war. Image. I call on to you, my image, my idol. To and with which I will, as they say, point. But that the image itself worshipped shall lo be of such beauty that you, who cannot be trapped, you who are invisible, shall wish to inhabit it. And although you will never, ever inhabit this image, that, too, is part of our relationship. October The reason the leaves are so noisy is that they have no other means of expression. I am aware of all implications, social or moral. What is memory but a convenience? Being human always involves repetition, doesn't it? Palace of Fear Introduction of characters and list of appearances. The music is, after all... An identified lady opens a hall door and screams in frenzy at the contents of the room. First, dialogue. I like the simple religious sound of glass shattering under water. Although not wholly a forest dweller myself, I feel we are a friction between heaven and earth. Indeed, spirit is but everlasting autumn crying for August. Second Dialogue We humans are a friction between heaven and earth. Amen. Poem Not unto any foreign service will I be honorable, 
nor in defense of those who seek custody in the forces of love. Before the speckled cobra I have made my point. The metal slides smoothly through my hands. A curious etching refers our humor to the length and coolness of the metal. I wrap it around your neck. Some kettles. We do unto headquarters as headquarters does unto us. Your clarity easily exceeds some, though eastward. Magic is the objects and what they became, heads. In the service of my Redeemer, quoth the rock, hex effect hexagonal. I'm not exactly into sensory deprivation myself, you know. On attaining remote control, I am surrounded by, am surrounded by silence, conspiring, conspiring, not paranoia. Not paranoia, but the mute and taut faces of memory pressing, pressed at my night window. The hand that invades my hand, invades, touches judgment, and unnerves the tracking, turns the signposts in a vortex of directions. I had to build an enclosure, surer than any prison around me. Now the alternate flickering. Now the alternate flickering of my will, incandescent and dim, strobes the motion into a clear design, a cold fire, that I can run my invaded hand through to burn away its polygamy. And always the two directions, knowing damned well that everything cannot be monitored, but, oh, that somehow, in the vertigo of knowledge, the equation for a pure random will raise itself like braille on the bark of these blind elms, the alternative being the absolute relaxing into ulterior, interior direction, listening to waves while parading blood and miracle before a faceless sky. The poem is written within the jurisdiction of remote control, like the switch on some bed lamp that we, in a cold sweat out of sleep, clutch for, half imagining the light actually coming on. Vox Glove frequently indulged in mime-screwing. Both would remove invisible clothes and, with eyes fixed on concealed cock and tits, transfix themselves in withdrawn and delicate rituals. At no time did either come closer than a quarter of an inch. That it was raining is for certain. Where the lovers were is uncertain. They not being confined their bodies. When looked at closely, the viewing screen becomes dense with detail. A billion ant-like resistors coil and grope blindly for each other's leads, hoping by some chance to complete a circuit of themselves that they may dissolve into function. Elect. The distortionist movement began several years ago in order to provide incorrect information for remote controls, omniscient sensors. This knots in the radar screens of remote control. His broad reptilian head lowered between my legs and he took my penis into his mouth. He then inserted his thin snake tongue into my urethra and smoothly thrust it right to my testes. 
each branch of the forked tongue reaching seminiferous tubules at the same time. The exact opposite of Satori is exactly Satori. The illusion of ascending, it seems, was maintained by constantly dwindling the apparatus of the soul. Through discrimination, the removal of color was unnoticed, as if the carpet that was being pulled out from under us had a ridge in it that caught and trapped us. What we at first thought unbounded became a beautiful and endless prison. The original purpose was hopelessly lost in the nature of that purpose. Although resisting intention a priori, the illusion of ascending, it seems, was maintained by... Sorry, sir, we are completely out of control. Thus the radar's echo informs the radar. On the radar screen, the foil radiates a blackness brilliant and vacuous as the negative of an intense white light. The rest of the viewing screen is grayed with the power of contrast. Detail, impossible for the radar under normal circumstances, makes visible each minute streamer. They are similar in their writhings to silver chromosomes performing a meiosis that sheds a black haze of luminescence, jet the black hole energy. Quartz times. The afternoon sky is illumined with radar foil, sparkling across acres of floating tinsel, falling, falling underwater, snow to the tragic and human storm of spruce towers beneath. The tranquility of a hurricane viewed from space. Fossils evaporating at the absolute event horizon of erosion. These figures exist in arenas of time, centered on extreme violence. Time, exaggerated and savored to favor the most Brutal rituals. The streamers fall in tinsel garlands on fir and spruce. German eagles in their spires and graces. Unseen Christmas in the middle of June. Her sweet underwater puddings like sticking your arm through the dry plaster wall of your bedroom and having it emerge out the other side. The next room is dark and filled with warm water. Your arm is immersed to the elbow and slippery creatures brush your skin. This is the dike of your mind you were a Dutch boy, and the only person this ocean belongs to is you, and you can't stand there forever. Like sticking your arm through the dry plaster wall of your bedroom and having it emerge out the other side. The next room is dark and filled with warm water. Your arm is immersed to the elbow, and slippery creatures brush your skin, like sticking the wall through a dry plaster bedroom of your skin. Your arse is endured to the elbow by slippery animals that review your sins. You are constantly filled with the creatures and your reasoning for them. This, then, is the wretched repose of our elders in Latin. This is the dyke of your mind. You are a Dutch boy, and the only person this ocean is real to is you, and you can't stand there forever. Like alike, sticking it out, your arm, or through glass, the dry words, plaster wall of remote control, your nerve studio, 
bedroom and merely watching, having undergone before, it emerge out the other side of the other way side. The next scene, room hitherto unsuspected, is dark and filled constantly with warm fluids, water. Your muscular contraction arm is buoying, immersed solid to the elbow, and furthermore slippery reels, creatures brush, matrimony, your skin. This, then, is the reasoning, dyke of gold, your mind. You are wretched, a Dutch boy, pure, and the only delay person this ocean wonder belongs to is you. And you cannot, can't stand it there forever. What questioning must New York, people, New York, can burning rising sun see eyes with unison of directionals, a star, binocular and lens, supremacy, I, I, can burning rising sun see cybernetic without them? There is resilient unspoken, a night lightning hollow, where photographic freeze action and repeat, willows reservoir, bend into fear, a silent wind, innate lunar depth, pouring inhuman from sweet hair and hands, the stars. The savage rejoinder, autumn, See previous sun razor illuminates thereby reducing what uncertain probing it seventh temple first door to the left cannot willfully support crocuses i speak am simply trying totally ripped curious lions about to tear off her clothes the tracings origin after descartes of your thighs grace The pointing sound lake track night is cathedral nocturne, suddenly Amazon noon, conscious giant clams of vanguard clouding itself turning. Perception, irradible, iridescent, defines closure as a sphere, ickle concretion of consciousness. Co consciousness, this half tone, sphere and stone, is so delicious, remarkable, in, in, descent, the woman's smoothness becomes, of its glandular secretions, circumference, re-interference, the emotional implications, puppetry, of the indigenous circumference, royalty, is love in love. In come. The reverse England, natural Brazilian organ music, kingdoms, legend, hopeless well, sanctuary, fucking, unnatural acts, whiplash, our radio artist, incendiary listening, devices, Germany, 1941, without greenhouse, form, letters, mail, slice, topography, the carbon train, mind, mole, into segmentative verb fragments, Euclidean, Max Ernst, ribbons, Lewis Carroll, and two plus two, tie them, them, excuse me, but did you say radio, in broken greenhouses, your cunt, hair, waves, often gas wizard, if Palm Saturday, nothing else, cow and scarab dung, comes in, up, right brothers, you, my friend, can black and white movies, write thin-handedly, a, b, letter, Gran Torino, or fuck you, Visit the Alps, a uh, bout friend Yuli. The autumn, central manifold, colloquialism grinding, i.e. introverted without premise, far out, the way out, hairy man, is snake eyes, the you animals are so beautiful, only true means to an end. Collective piss off, voice, the rising, Social, antisocial, gestures bring this man some water, are merely, simply idiomatic, idiomatic, see before, echoes, 
distilled porridge, of the retaining viscosity, central Frank O'Hara colloquialism, you wrote to me of earlier, adding with a note of disquiet to his voice. I'm glad you noticed the way I used that particular word, because what you felt, that it was kind of hollow and non-sentient, is merely an instinctive reaction to the truly alien. I can using certain colloquialisms, with correct intonation, create a hole in your morphemic conception of the language. I truly say nothing, and yet a faint echo is heard, with distinct clarity, tiny. The quality of the sound in the echo allows you to reconstruct with absolute clarity the dimensional qualities of this limit. A blank velvet meniscus in space itself. It's righteous, meaning to say, only enough lies cautiously in context resembling dragon of the carnal circle, millions resplendent, familiar with it. Flowing liquid air through granite slam, the field mouse, memory one grain please, core bird logic, the information blank, grand handles water music, insight psychological terminology is snake grass, but, 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 but arbitrarily blackboard Breton tokenism versus tabula rasa, night rasa, conceived brilliant of lapping, in versa, forward, and low underbrush, equinox, national geographic, of presensationalism, self, this is also true of admission. To August evening, every green night console, person, FBI, his granola, own suspension bridge, faucet, Hockey night in Canada. The spies, unbroken, sullen, are listeners. Exchanged, you remain. At the broker, under surveillance. Armed water. Guard a sentient tiny watchmaker. Balance within her irises, golden. The heart, the heat of. The nation crosses itself. Each spy, through the plane of generation. Knows remote. His mirror agent, as cold, a rolled cylinder, contrapunal, and why here, an owl with sparkly eyes, information hole tied out, through knots, the plane's geometrical surface, tension by, love, a gold thread, luminescent gases, as gothic, the hair fools all of them, of the imaginary beasts, lovers they slaughtered, reveal shivering, on sodium amytal, coiled, into gusts increasing towards evening, the hard-oiled thighs, face of the interrogator, the interrogators. Speechless with fear, illiterate with hate, what light descends speechless from night's symmetry's movement, meridian is azimuth, a continuum interrupted by pale abandoned gold, your greatest works of mind. Concept rough of time. A wind. Fossil is reason. Merely beyond. To exist. Be again. Believed. Steel and gold. Out of control. Congealed in landscapes. Ribbons the crystal. Inseparable of Maya. Liniments. Erectile. Unfolding Egyptian rose. In a membrane. Silken. Zeitgart. Tent of dreams. Dripping. Untold voyeurs. Untold uncharted. The Memory Table Being stretches from thought to thought, in much the same way the thin thread of the wasp's waist connects thorax and abdomen. In much the same way, as the siphuncle of the chambered nautilus winds through the spirals of its growth. This being is perceived as soul, and threads the phenomena of mind in a special sequence known as personality. The beginning and end of each thought is marked by a gap. 
existence implicates a thread through the gap which cannot be proven. A thought echoes in the mind and is deflected from many strange contours before being returned. The duration of this radar sequence is one thought, a flower head of ramifications ranging in size from a half second to five years in a man's life. So the being contained threading phenomena alternately contracts to the single point, the gap, and expands in the synaptic ramifications of a single thought. This sequence, viewed linearly, would look roughly like intricate disks composed of crooked and crystalline branches. Each of the disks along a string, a necklace. Notes on Diagram B. Detailed view of single thought represented by bars in the lateral view of a thought train as shown in Diagram A. Memory grows out of being. However, a non-representational view would reveal many strings of disks, perhaps with the edges of an adjacent disk touching, obliviating the need for being-generated memory. Memory as a salmon goes upstream to spawn. C. Sequence of an actual memory. After memory has been stored in contemporaneous, solid moment, memory jacket, the connecting tubes degenerate and disappear, except in the case of deja vu memory chains, as shown in diagram D. D. An attached thought sequence, number one, that can reoccur because of an archetypal position it occupies in the mind of the individual. The serial memory tube is a self-dependent series of thoughts in a particular order that when triggered by the correct event in the present executes a meaningful and extremely familiar dance. In the visual cortex of the brain, a thought corresponds exactly to the form of the perceived object. Thus we see a typical Dutch canal scene as it appears in the brain. The objects are dense and jumbled because the thought it composed only of what Fovea centralis sees. Gaps of non-perception are left out and we see a condensed rotational vista. The plane of reflections is holy ghost, while the equally opposite images are father and son. Still water is contemplation. When what I had been looking for found me, I was pressed fragile in a beast palace of cells. Hypostasis. Symmetrical prayer is the pressing of the indivisible mirror that generated the two hands. They meet because the generation is invisible. The procession takes place in the bilateral plane of intersection being extended from its inhabitation of the living form. As the surface of the universal level table is the surface of still water, as the swimmer is intersected by a plain truth. St. John knew the water to be infused with the Holy Ghost, an absolute which Jesus understood and walked upon. Remote control. On fossilization, remember the emotions you are feeling, 
may not be your own. Of every seven years we are entirely recomposed. That from which we are made, what we see out of, is completely transmuted in a transubstantiation of actuality. The replacement of reality with fiction is the same process. The rug is pulled in front of your eyes off a facsimile of itself. Remote control, alien replacement of all that which you call tangible. Out of control. It is a warm gray afternoon in August. You are in the country, in a deserted quarry of light gray Devonian limestone in southern Ontario. A powdery luminescence oscillates between the rock and sky. You feel sure that you could recognize these clouds with the limestone texture out of random cloud photographs from all over the world. You then lean over and pick up a flat piece of layered stone. It is a rough triangle about one foot across. Prying at the stone, you find the layers come apart easily in large flat pieces. Pale gray moths are pressed between the layers of stone. Freed, they flutter up like pieces of ash caught in a dust devil. You are splashed by the other children but move not. Field Intelligence The first function of an intelligence agent, once he gains awareness of his destined role as an agent, is to attract a specific attention. Although he does not know the attention of what he is attracting, nonetheless he intuitively sets up his own network. In complete secrecy, he maintains a subliminal code of messages and signals aimed at triggering the attention of another agent, who himself is presumably hooked into a vast system of agents that has already passed through this first stage. At this point, he will be approached by the secret society, through dreams or unusual orderings in his day-to-day -day life. He will either recognize and choose the mysterious levels of the secret society, or eventually be hired by occult government intelligence agencies and be used in the double agent system. The secret society permeates both systems. It is manifest most purely, however, in its own self-generated rituals of omniscient paranoia and symbolic self-denial, in all fields of knowledge and secrecy. These pursuits are executed without definite direction, as government agents know it. He extends his own being through the invisible social tunnels sustained and maintained unconsciously by all of us. In all the shufflings of group exercise, he reaches with an invisible question throughout those he meets. A remote control aimed at one person who might never come, but who would recognize the signal if exposed to it. The secret society solicits on a personal and individual level only. Scenario we watch the remote control agent wend his way through the crowd in a store. To his eyes, each face is peculiarly distressed under the warp of a burden unshakable. Each face is a caricature of the mind of its possessor in a theater of endless variations. Each face seems, 
somehow familiar to the agent, yet when examined closely becomes that of a stranger. Strangers playing a role familiar only because the workings of remote control lend a natural significance to their parts in a production where no detail is too insignificant, where there are no lead roles. At this, the remote control agent smiles. The face is the flower head of the brain, is to the soul as the cat's tail is to his mood. Each face is actually a brain thinly disguised as a face. Head accidents reveal how superficial this face is, yet on a clear night you can hear the crickets ring forever. The remote control agent remains in pure observation and proceeds into rough quadrants. Although the price of membership into remote control was complete insanity, he had made the bargain. He pauses in alcoves or in behind doors in order to avoid people he knows. When they pass him, he follows them at a distance, discreet, always a few people behind, keeping out of sight. He ascertains when his image is reflected into their visual range by oblique store windows and makes grotesque and threatening gestures, knowing full well that his friend will register his image only unconsciously and never consciously. He hates to kill the sweet and beautiful angels that love him. He is constantly writing his observations in notes on a pad in his right pocket. His hand and pen are concealed in his voluminous pocket where he has laboriously trained himself to write and turn pages without looking. These notes, greatly advantageous in revealing the nature of his own mind, must also be constructed in the language of remote control. This is very hard and demands almost impossible effort. Remote control never asked for the messages, nor replied in any manner. Rather, the messages were demanded by remote control in the sympathetic vibration of a crystal deep within the agent that intuited remote control's insistent and urgent demands. Although the remote control demands... His trial and error, approach to each day, each week, leads to a secret and undeniable conviction that, yes, this is what remote control wishes, what had been expected. The agent knew, rather, that remote control was coming closer and closer. He felt sure of its coded presence, and its intangible song hummed softly at times in his brain. From a Handbook of Remote Control 1. Point of Entry In every human mind there are areas of ignorance. With some it is mathematics, with others mechanics or linguistics, or with some even science. These are the dark zones in the mind of Western man. Within this zone, which everyone possesses, there is room for almost infinite distortion. Using this area as a starting point, the remote control agent can slowly erode a particular person's concept and perception of the universe. Unthought-of possibilities suddenly hostile and chaotic, appear in the once peaceful universe of the attacked mind. 2. Individual to Individual The remote control personality constructs a meticulous lie around another being. Particle by particle, the solid reality that composed the allegorical ground he stood on is replaced by fantasies and lies. Fossilization. This work, once attained, creates a time loophole 
a backwater, where reality and time stand halted. The remote control agent hides in this cul-de-sac until he builds up enough energy to attempt a group control situation. At any point, a skillful agent can reverse the process and replace fantasy with reality so smoothly the individual does not even know his feet ever left the ground. 3. Group Control An intrinsic part of remote control next to individual to individual modulation is the subliminal manipulation of large groups of people through the use of false personalities by the agent. The remote control personality, intuitively attuned to the desires and causal networks operative in all humans, performs the mean role induced by the group as a whole. This role usually absorbs any negative or dangerous outbursts of the group in a sponge of overreaction, an archetypal energy drain that must always be shielded from the perception of the group. The agent uses this flexible personality to deceive the others into thinking, for example, that he is dull or unperceptive, allowing him to pick up information they might otherwise have deigned to mention if their defenses were up. He must roll with the punches. With such a field around him, he ceases to exist in the ordinary sense and is free to consciously choose and design the flow of events around him. One work spoken softly behind a person in the room, speaking will fester slowly in the speaker's unconscious until it produces a physical manifestation in that person's conversation later on that evening. Many such plants, placed properly and with enough people, lead to an absolute control of these groups. Once the vision of an entire social grouping of humans has been distorted, it is easy to use this flawless background, this torrent of water, to surround and completely isolate an individual out of even this context. These individuals are highly useful for their double enclosure of unreality, renders them plastic in the hands of remote control. At no time in this whole process is the continuum interrupted for any of the humans involved. Only the agent is immaculately monitoring the piecemeal replacement of truth with lies. People who catch on, and there are few in society who do, are hopeless paranoids, of course. The recent attainment of remote control during the Second World War is equal in effect to the invention of language. Four, field overlapping. A remote control agent is always on the lookout for overlapping in remote control energy territories. The usual manifestation of this overlapping of, say, two groups of 40 people in the hands of two separate remote control agents is the sudden appearance of mental illness in, say, four people. These individuals, caught between two conflicting remote control territories, have no recourse but by schizophrenia because of dual and conflicting possessions of their behavior. The crucial point here is which agent notices the incipient personality disorders first and is able to use that situation to force another remote control agent to disclose himself. Knowledge is criminal negligence. Knowledge is membership. 5. Tracing the remote control agent 
tags his statements before he inserts them into the mainstream of human communication. He is always aware, in a perfect memory, of all his previous actions and utterances. He watches carefully as his statement, his radioactive particle, disappears into the mind of another person. He loses sight of it. After a while it resurfaces in a state of strange mutation, having traveled through the minds of two or even five people. This mutation and change of the original tagged statement allows the remote control personality to reconstruct the processes working in the minds of those individuals concerned. They are helpless in the light of this scrutiny which uses absolute degrees of fixedness to measure their distortion. A remote control agent might implant an ego-flattering fantasy construct of minor proportions in the mind of another he wishes to study. Even at times, doing this aloud, in the full conscious monitoring studio of the other person, and see it emerge from a friend of that individual a week later, having been related to him as part of the original individual's personal mythology. 6. Antimatter. In order to satiate his control and the immense negative vacuum it occupies in human terms, the agent must pay the exact penance required of such power by nature itself. Rothschild. Existing in a paradox, legalized by time, the agent becomes artificial in the harmonizing reign of destinies. The self-perpetuating remote control group blends softly into the brocade of humanity. The identity of the agent is revealed to those within his control zone, and the system automatically convinces the two functions. With each soul of the controlled the agent realizes another heat shield to cushion his re-entry. The hosts surrounding, entranced by their own destruction and his incorporation into the world. The Song of Remote Control Give yourselves up to remote control. There is no choice. Either you come known or not knowing. You come. Grovel like newborn in total submission, throwing away jewels and watches in profusion to our sweet robbers. Give up totally. Step down from the control tower and marvel at the jets colliding in brilliant explosions over the airstrip. Grimace. Piss with fear, if you like. Then give up. Give up like a joyful suicide. Gracefully, from a high building. Give up like the never-to-be-born are giving up. Give yourselves over to remote control. We will take care of everything. Give up.